all of my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. All of my steps in your word. I want to walk worthy according to your will. If you are the mind step, Lord, I'll do your perfect will. The world is ever changing, but you are still the same. If you are the mind step, I'll pray. James Clark from Better Family Life, a great friend of mine, and he will take you from this point. Thank you and God bless you. Good evening. I would first like to give thanks to God who is the giver and the sustainer of all of our lives. Then I would like to thank the pastor here, Reverend Nelson Watts Jr. for opening up the doors of his church on this very sad and very somber occasion. Uh, I'm always a little torn about participating in this event, but it is a very, very necessary event because when we talk about and when we look at this issue of the crime and the violence that impacts our neighborhoods and our families on a daily basis, I believe that the solution will come out of situations and out of gatherings like these. I'm not a real big proponent of talking. I think that we've talked too long. I think that we've, we've marched too far, and I think that we've rallied long enough. I think that we need to assess where we are in history. And as we look at what is going to be the spark of our latest battle and our most, and our most hideous opponent, your pain, your suffering, our collective cry will be the cry that Rosa Parks had. Families that have been victims of these situations will lead us to a new level of consciousness. So as we mourn with you, we pray that God gives you the strength to get through this tragedy that your family faces. We then also pray that God will give you the courage that he gave Rosa Parks. We pray that God will give you the desire to have a bigger vision just as he gave Rosa Parks because the trouble that we face today is much greater than segregation. The, the problems that we face today are much more hurtful than Jim Crow. Amen. The problem that we face today, family, is each other. So the entire city feels your pain. The entire city mourns with you. The entire city embraces you and we want to work with you to fill that void. I believe that the void will come when you take the passion that you feel in your hurt and turn it into action. Uh -huh. You know, as I said before, I'm not a real big proponent 
of us coming together and talking about the problem. We've done enough of that. We don't need another march. We don't need another rally. I believe that a march and a rally will benefit us if we just march to rallies and buy a hamburger. Marching and rallying will do nothing for us anymore. We must begin to mobilize and we must begin to deal with the most pressing issue that we've ever faced in America, and that's the violence that we inflict on each other. Do you agree with that? At this time, I want to call up the president of one of the most relevant organizations in America now. You see, when they labeled us the most dangerous city in America, the solutions that we have immediately became the most relevant solutions. I want to introduce you to a lady that I have had the pleasure of working directly with this last year. She's a woman of prayer, a woman of few, act a few words, but a lot of action. The founder and president of Families Advocating Safe Streets, please stand to your feet and welcome Sister Jeanette Culpepper to the microphone. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. I'd like to thank the pastor for allowing us to have his service today. And um, once again, just thank you, Ron. Or is there anyone here that received a letter? If so, would you stand at this time? Anyone unfortunate lost someone to Bible this year, would you stand at this time? We hope that this service will be of some comfort to you. We realize there's just simply no words that can take away your pain or ease your sorrow. But I want you to know there are people that do care. And we pray that God will give you the strength to get to those difficult times. Thank you. I would also like to ask any other members of Families Advocating Safe Streets, I see Miss Elizabeth Watkins is here. Any other members of Families Advocating Safe Streets, can you stand at this time, please? All right, thank you very much. Please give a warm welcome to the mayor of the city of St. Louis, Mayor Francis Slay. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Clergy, especially Reverend Nelson Watts, Jr. Thank you for having us here again in your church. Jeanette Culpepper and families advocating for safe streets, thank you for your leadership.
This is important work on behalf of the people of St. Louis. I want to recognize uh, Jennifer Joyce, our citywide elected official, circuit attorney of the city of St. Louis, who has a tough job. And her job is to bring those who are committing violence in our city to justice. And that's a tough job. And I want to thank her for the good work that she and her team do in city government. But I'm here every year. And I really appreciate supporting this and Jeanette and everyone and families advocating for safe streets for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think it's important that I, as mayor, bring focus on the fact that there is indeed violence in our city. And that that violence has an impact on our city, on our neighborhoods, on our people, on our families. It has, it has an impact on our children. And I think that we need to know that it's when you see the crime statistics, it's just not about numbers. It's about real people being victimized in our city. And I think it's also important for us to remember those who have lost their lives to violence in the city of St. Louis and in St. Louis County. These are real people with mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews. People that impact, have, have an impact on all of us in this room and many others. And so I, I wanted to be here as I am every year to emphasize that because it is very important. As uh, James Clark was saying, there's, there's a lot of issues in the city of St. Louis. And uh, we can't lose, lose sight of what's the most important, and that is safety for the people who live in our city, who visit here, who do business here, and um, who uh, have family here. Many of the people that we're, rem we're remembering tonight should be here with us. They should be celebrating the holidays with their families. They should be smiling and laughing with friends and family members. But unfortunately, because of violence, they are not. But it's not up to us to avenge their deaths or to perpetuate the violence. Two wrongs do not make a right. Instead, we must be committed as a community to helping our youth to stay on the right path, like what James Clark and the people at Better Family Life do every day. We must teach them to value life. We must teach them to manage their anger. Bring up our youth in, environment, in an environment with boundaries and rules. We must also stress forgiveness. Even losing one person to violence is unacceptable. But we all must cooperate to achieve a truly peaceful society. This can't just be the police department's responsibility or the responsibility only of city government. It is the responsibility of all of us and it is up to each and every one of us to be positive role models and mentors, to teach good decision making, to teach safe habit, habits, and to show that anger does not have to lead to violence. And, and it starts in the home. It starts right in the home. I want to express my deepest sympathies to the families and friends of those we're here remembering tonight. And I vow as mayor to continue to find and provide healthy opportunities to make St. Louis a better place for job opportunities and particularly a better place with better opportunities for our youth. And to work with the police department to provide the resources to catch the bad guys and bring them to justice. I hope we will see a significant decrease in violence in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure being with you 
have a blessed uh, New Year's and a safe one, and may God bless all of you. Please welcome the Chief of Police for the City of St. Louis, Chief Dan Isom. Thank you, James. I want to say thanks to the Reverend for allowing us to be here again this year, and also to Jeanette Culpepper for bringing us together each year in memory of the people who have died this year and those who have met untimely death in years past. Unfortunately, today we sit here um, in a position not different from last year. The number of homicides that we've had year to date this year is basically the same as we had last year. And so with sadness, uh, we, we report that we haven't had much movement from last year. And so from the perspective of the St. Louis Police Department, we say we're sorry for those who have lost loved ones this year. You have our condolences. We are here to support you, but we're also here to make sure that we do everything we can do to hold those people accountable who have taken the lives of your loved ones. That's extremely important that, that we do that. But as Mr. Clark says, that arresting these individuals is not the solution. Uh, there's much more that we have to do in our community to make sure that this violence is not perpetuated. As the police chief and as a member of this community, uh, we are certainly touched by the violence that goes on in our community. Um, certainly one of the most heart-wrenching things for me is as I look at my pager at night and see another homicide, or get a call from a commander that an officer has been shot. And this year, we've had several officers who have been victims of the violence as well. And so, as a police department, we are in the community. We are dealing with the same things that community members are dealing with. And if I could say one thing is that we've got to do something to change the hearts and the minds of these young people out here in our community. We have officers here who are present today, and I know Jennifer Joyce is here. And as members of the law enforcement community and the justice system, we arrest a lot of people. It's not for a lack of putting a lot of people in jail. We put a lot of people away. So there's got to be another solution. And when you listen to these young people, there's a hopelessness, there's a sense of them being lost that I just don't understand. I really don't understand it. But in some way, we've got to figure out how we can change these young people's attitudes. We've got to do that. That's the only long-term solution to changing what we're dealing with. And there's one thing we've got to do is there can't be any excuses. You know, I really don't care what neighborhood you grew up in, whether you're in a gang, whether you sell drugs. There is no excuse for killing anyone. No excuse. There is no excuse for taking another person's life. And so we've got to start there. And I think for each one of us in the community, we've got to say, I've got to say, what can I do to send that message to a young person? What can I do, each and every one of us, looking in the mirror and saying, what can I do for a young person to make them realize that violence is not the answer to dealing with the dispute? It's not guns, it's not drugs, it's not gangs. It's a young person who says, when I have a problem, when I have a beef with somebody, I'm going to that, settle that by violence. That's at the core of what it is, because people are using drugs and selling drugs all over. You know, they're selling drugs in Creve Coeur and Chesterfield. They're just not killing each other in Chesterfield and Creve Coeur. So I think that's the commitment that we have to have as a community. Um, each young person, we have to try to change their hearts and minds. We're going to continue to do what we do. We're going to go out and search for the bad guys and we're going to put them in jail if we can find them. 
knowing that that's only a temporary solution. And with that being said, there are a lot of people out here who have been a big part of making sure that your community is safe. And I'd like to recognize a couple of them. Uh, my chief of staff, Tim Reagan, is here today. You can stand up. <laughs> Captain Mike Sack, commander of the Homicide Division. <laughs> Lieutenant John Green, also commander in the Homicide Division. <laughs> I see in the back room there, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Filler, Antoinette Filler, who is the Lieutenant Colonel over Community Policing. These are the 900 officers who patrol the streets every day. She has the largest bureau in the police department, and she's here with us as well. And then Captain Rochelle Jones, who has come to this candlelight vision for many years. She's over our special operations team and gang squad. I'd also like to say thank you uh, to the ministers who many of you all have met who are part of our Homicide Ministry Alliance. Um, Reverend David Battle is here today with us. Um, he does a tremendous job. <laughs> and if someone else here from the ministry who is present, this Pastor James is here as well. I just want to say thank you to, to all the officers, the pastors who are part of reaching out to the community to let them know that we care about all the victims of homicides. Anyone who has died, no matter what your background is, where you came from, uh, we are concerned about the death of anybody in our community and we're gonna do everything we can to hold the people who have committed that crime accountable. So hopefully next year will be a better year, that we will have fewer homicides. As the mayor said, one is too many, but certainly 142 is way too many. So happy new year to you, and hopefully we have a safer 2011. Please welcome Circuit Attorney General Joy St. Louis. Although the events that draw us here this evening are some of the most tragic that we see in our community, um, I've been to this event many, many times over the years, and I always draw some comfort from hearing the speakers here and seeing such a great group of committed citizens come together to honor those that we've lost to violence in the preceding year. Thank you to the organizers of this event, to Jeanette Culpepper, and everybody who works with her and families advocating safe streets for once again hosting this. And thank you as well, Reverend, for, for allowing us to have this event in, in your facility this evening. I want to add my voice to the voice of the chief and the mayor and others who have spoke here tonight and uh, say a few words of thanks to those in our community who are here this evening that work so hard to try and keep our city as safe as possible. And I mean the police uh, and the firefighters and the paramedics and people of that nature, but I also mean ordinary citizens such as yourself who are here because you care about this issue and you want to make a difference and you want to lend your voice and whatever you can do to help solve this problem that's confronting our city. Um, I also want to express my gratitude to people such as the clergy who do such a terrific job and our political leaders like Alderman Moore and Mayor Slay and our community activists like Ms. Culpepper. I know that all of you who work in the community and fight for the safety of this city are only human beings. And sometimes you may get discouraged. And sometimes you may feel like your work is in vain. But I'm here to tell you that it's really not. As the prosecutor, the lead prosecutor for the last 10 years of the city that some people would call the most dangerous city in America, I can tell you that I see the results of your work every day. 
there is nothing more powerful than the community and the commitment of the community in making this city safe. It is so vital. It is so important. Please don't ever give up on that. Please don't ever lose hope on that. And to those of you who are here tonight, and we, we ask you to stand earlier, who have lost a loved one due to violence in this city in the past year, my heart especially goes out to you. In my work as a prosecutor, I've met with the families of hundreds of, uh, hundreds of family members over the years who have paid the ultimate price for the culture of violence that for some reason seems to be invading the hearts of so many people in our community right now. And I can tell you on behalf of everybody in the circuit attorney's office, you have our sincere condolences. And you also have our sincere and heartfelt commitment that we will do everything in our power and within the bounds of the law to hold those who commit violent acts in the city of St. Louis accountable. Because it's not about statistics. It's not about numbers. It's about people. And when we read these names tonight and we hear the names of the people that we've lost, we're not thinking about them as numbers. We're thinking about them as our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, and our sisters. And we miss them, and we love them, and they should be here. And we will not forget. The Bible says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And my hope is that this gathering and this feeling of unity that we have here tonight provide some small measure of com comfort to those of you who have lost so much. And my prayer is for all of us in the community, each and every one, to have a safe and a peaceful new year in 2011. Thank you very much. He's currently the president of the St. Louis Clergy Coalition. Please welcome Reverend Dr. E.G. Shields. Thank you, James, the pastor of this church, Pastor Watts, and other members of the clergy, our elected officials, and public officials, and politicians, Ms. Club Pepple, and all of you that are here assembled. Let me lend my voice by saying I sympathize with those of you who've lost of loved one to violence this year. While it's been many years ago, it seemed like it was just a few days ago where I lost a daughter violently in 1986 in December, right before Christmas. I understand it. Phoned my church on the way here and received a voice mail message where one of the young people that was shot uh, with the group that was shot here the other day was brother to one of the members at my church. As a clergy person, we get involved with these kinds of things all year long. And I sometimes wonder where is the remedy to all of this? And because my young people call me old school, I just have to go old school. And old school is it's with the home, the parents. They just can't get away from parents. The children that perpetuated these violence, violence in our streets, they don't come from Mars, Pluto, Jupiter, or some other planet. They come from around the corner, upstairs, downstairs, sometimes in our own homes. And we must address those issues. We must address those young people. When I look at all of the young people in here, I'm happy, but then there's a part of me that is sad because I'm hoping that you will be able to live a fruitful, wholesome, and productive life. I hope and wish for you longevity. But unless we do something to turn this around, it narrows your chance. 
of having longevity. I came up in an, in an era in the South. I love to tell people I'm from B.B. King's hometown. In Vianola, Mississippi. I came up during the Matia situation. I knew about all of that. I experienced all of the discrimination and all of that kind of thing. But it didn't do what we're now experiencing in our own community. This is devastating. In every home in that era, on the mantelpiece above the fireplace, you would see a graduation picture of an older brother or sister. And it was suggesting to the siblings that if your older brother or sister made it, you can make it also. Have you ever wondered how these young people, and you're present here today, can learn a song verbatim left by hearing it just one time on a CD, a tape, however you hear it, on your iPod, however you hear it, you can learn it, every word, just one time. No pen, no paper, no notes, you just learn it. You learn it because an environment is created and you say, I must learn this because it's the latest thing that's gone. You envision yourself dancing to the latest steps and you learn. As parents and responsible adults, we must create that environment for our young people. They can learn. They was told many years ago, you won't learn. We've done a psychological profile on your parents. Your daddy was no good. He was an absentee father. Your mama no good. And today, we're looking at those people that they said would not amount to anything. They're lawyers and doctors. And uh -huh. So you can learn. And I'm just simply saying to the parents and to the consenting adults here, help us out. I'm pleased to say that the St. Louis Clergy Coalition, we stand on the cutting edge of all kinds of issues. Pleased to say that I have my good friend, very personal friend, and Reverend Dr. Earl Edward Nance, Jr., who have labored in this same field as I'm laboring now. Good to see Betty here, who lost a son, good friend of mine. I'm suggesting to you to help us out. The Clergy Coalition, we pulled up and working with James Clark, A Better Family Life. We want to make a difference. I, too, I'm tired of talking. I don't have time for marching. I don't have time for meetings just for the sake of meeting. We need to do something. We, can know, we may debate the fact that St. Louis is the most violent city in America. We can debate that. But one thing we cannot debate is not even up for discussion. And that is the fact that every week we're losing our young people to violence. So we must do something about it. God bless you. Yes. My prayers are with you who've lost a loved one through violence. And I bid all of you a most happy and prosperous New Year. I want to introduce to you a man that I have a great deal of respect for, the Chief of Police for St. Louis County, Chief Fitch. Thank you, Mr. Clark and Ms. Culpepper. Thank you again for inviting me. And Pastor Watts, thank you for hosting us again this year, sir. Thank, thank you, you very much. I just came from the Sunset Hills and Fenton area. If you got to see any news today, you see what's going on out there. So please, as you say your nightly prayers, keep the people of the region that are devastated by the tornado that hit today in your thoughts and in your prayers. And please offer them a moment of silence in your hearts and in your prayers as they try to recover from that. One of the things I'm encouraged about, what do we have to look forward to? You've heard a lot of bad news today. Here's what I think we have to look forward to in the St. Louis community. We recognize we have a problem. We say we have a problem. Anybody that's been around an alcoholic, they're not gonna get fixed till what? 
they admit they've got a problem. We have finally in the St. Louis community admitted we have a problem, okay? So we're on the road to recovery. That's how I see it. In St. Louis County, in 2010, unfortunately, our homicides were up compared to 2009, unfortunately. Again, the scourge of drugs has infiltrated. It's gone across boundaries. It's in St. Louis County. It's in St. Charles County. Did you see what just happened there a few days ago in St. Charles County? The young football player that was murdered, okay? It's not just a city problem, this is a national problem. But we recognize in St. Louis it's a problem. What we started doing about it is one of the things I'm pretty proud of in St. Louis County. We've now added an officer to every one of our seven precincts called a juvenile resource officer. We've committed, we've got drug officers, we've got auto theft, we've got homicide, we've got all these specialized assignments, but what we recognized we didn't have was a particular officer assigned to work with problems juvenile problems in our community. So that's all they're gonna be doing. And one of the things I'm really proud that they've gotten involved with is trying to get to these youngsters while they're in the middle schools, because you know that's where these problems are starting. They're really in the middle schools. It's the 13, 14, 15. If we don't get to them then, it's too late. It's too late. Isn't it a shame? We had this funeral in Wellston yesterday for this young, beautiful young lady that was killed at the nightclub. We had 25 police officers assigned to a funeral. Isn't that a shame that we have to do that in our community? We have to protect people when they go to funeral homes to express their condolences. So what can we do? We gotta get to these youth. We gotta get to these juveniles. So these new officers, they're assigned to work with these juveniles and try to intercept them early. They start off with little things like running away from home. Why are they running away from home? Are there problems in the home that they're running away from? Is that what we need to go after? So we're really trying to go after the root of the problem. So I hope, I pray at this time next year, I'm able to report to you that our homicides in St. Louis County have gone down dramatically because we've had an effect on the juveniles in our community. We're also working in partnership with the U.S. Army. Believe it or not, if you don't know this, the U.S. Army, they're interested in crime in our community. How can we get to these youth and talk them into a life of service Give them something to look forward to. Because you know what we hear from some of these kids? A profound sense of hopelessness. A profound sense of hopelessness. And as long as they have that attitude, we're gonna be having big crowds at these, these events every year. So we have to work on that. And you've heard some talk about handing job applications. That's all good stuff. We have to, we have to head in that direction. And the last thing I wanna say is I was a homicide detective, for those of you that were here last year. So I've worked these cases as a detective. These affect us as well. These affect our homicide detectives. You become part of our family. You families that are here, the families that are represented, that lost loved ones, you do become part of our family. We become very close with you. And unfortunately, I had the opportunity on a summer night to get to meet with, in a very unfortunate situation, the family of Tyrone Thompson. As you know, we lost Tyrone Thompson, a pillar of our community, in a tragic shooting in Blackjack this past summer. He's not number 13 on my list. He's not just a number. He's an individual. He is a former police chief of Pagedale. He was minding his own business out there when he was accosted by these two subjects who tragically took his life from him. Ms. Thompson, thank you for being here today. Ms. Betty Thompson, another pillar of our community. Thank you for being here, and sorry for your loss. Now what good, what good can possibly come out of a homicide? I know with Tyrone Thompson's case, we're working on some changes to some juvenile laws because these were some bad guys that attacked Tyrone that night. They should have been dealt with earlier in their life and instead they were out on the street still victimizing innocent people. So we're working with the state legislature and the attorney general's office to tighten up some of these juvenile laws so we can address some of those loopholes and some of those problems that are helping create some of this problem. So you'll be hearing a little bit more about that as the year goes on, as the legislature starts their session in January. We hope to see some positive result as a result of that work. And finally, I'd just like to say, I pledge to you as the police chief of St. Louis County that we will work very hard with the city of St. Louis 
our federal partners and all of our municipal partners in the area to help solve this problem. We're not going to solve it, but we can certainly get this lower and get rid of St. Louis being seen as the most violent city. So thank you for being here. It means a lot to us to see the family support for you to be here too. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Fitch. Next we'll have a song from one of the most progressive and committed and committed aldermen that I know, Alderman Sam Moore. Enough of me. Lord, I will live. My eyes. pastor of the church to bring remarks is something to introduce a man in his own house. So please welcome Elder Willie Nelson Jr., the pastor. Nelson Watts Jr., a man in his own house. opportunity and as was stated it is not a pleasant opportunity but the unity of those that are here today hopefully will help in some way to uh, soften the blow of death that was done by violence to your loved one and even in this ward in this community in this church we are trying our best, we honor uh, Sister Cole Pepper, who has done this event. And uh, let's give her another hand. She has an outstanding job. But let me say this, and I'll just briefly talk. I, we are also blessed with the presence in our national church organization, the Church of God in Christ, who is here in November, and our Hundred and third Holy Convocation, and I know on behalf of uh, Church of God in Christ, we thank Chief Vice and the Police Department for their protection and help during the convention. But we have our National Urban Initiative President, Pastor Baz, will be coming, and I know he can speak better. But our presiding bishop has five initiatives that. He has set in place, and here at our church locally, we are also committed to helping in this effort 
as I was praying, not only to stopping the violence, but to demolishing violence in this area. And I'm with Reverend E.G. Shields, as he said earlier, that it is through the home. I am younger, but I came up on the old end of the stick. And many of you that came up, you know that uh, uh, in my neighborhood, I grew up in the Berkeley area. And uh, in my neighborhood, my mother and father made sure that uh, we had guidelines in the home. And uh, when we got home and they were not there, there was a certain distance we could go. And if she was at home, she had us in a distance where if she hollered my name, I could hear her. And if I couldn't hear her and she couldn't hear me, there was a problem. And when I got home, I knew about it and uh, the belt knew about it. And nowadays we have stopped the whooping, we have stopped chastising as the Bible have told us to do. Teachers cannot tell our children anything if not, and they're teaching and then we come to the school and, and we're in it with the teachers. But when I grew up, we had, the teacher had a responsibility. The pastor of the church had a responsibility. The elder in the church, the elder in the community had a responsibility. And it was true that if they said something to you, you respected that. But now the respect level has left. And I would just say, being a younger pastor, younger to those that are here in the audience, I want those that are under 40 and under, I want you to stay. And if you are 40 and under, I want you to stay. Look at this generation. You have the power, it is in you. You can be seated. I just want you to see what we have here. This is our time. None of us that stood, that's 40 and under, have to be on this list next year. None of us that are 40 and under have to be involved in having our names put in the police system or the system. We have the power within ourselves. I tell you here at church, you have enough power to stop and you say the devil, no, the devil didn't make you do it. You can stop yourself. You tell yourself, no, I'm not going into that environment that is inducive to violence. I'm not going into that environment that is inducive to drugs. I'm not going into that environment that is inducive to issues that will bring me down and to break you as a young, beautiful woman. As a man, doesn't mean nothing that you break the bridges and you can bring a baby, but what do you do after that baby comes? What do you do? The responsibility is with us. And so I'm committed to every family here today. I want you to know that not just because we host this, but we are committed to you. If you need us, we're here for you. And we're gonna do more, uh, Brother Clark, in this community to help relieve the violence. And I'm going to sit down here, but I do believe, I do believe that if all of us join together as one unit, doesn't matter whether it's black, white, red, whatever color we are, it does not matter. If we join our forces together in unifying what we have, we can bring the violence down in this community. Praise God. We're praying for you families. We want you to know we're here for you. We love you. Your problem is my problem. Whether it's city, county, or as she said, whether it's in St. Charles County, your problem becomes our problem. Because when they see St. Louis, they don't just say city or county, they say it's bad in St. Louis. So your problem becomes our problem. We love you and we're committed to you. Thank you so much. For this. Please stand to your feet and welcome Betty Thompson to the podium. Stand to your feet. I don't feel no ways tired. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe that my God brought us this far to leave. Certainly, I want to Thank God for this day. A day that you and I have never seen before. 
but a day that will make all of us just a little bit better than we were the day before. It's an honor, really, and a privilege to be here today because you never know what's going to happen to any of us in life. And we're here not because of the tragic of those that died, but we're here because they live, because they will continue to live within each of us. They will continue to live because of organizations and per persons like Jeanette Coldfield and James Clark and the Minister Coalition and all of the other people, they will live on. Yes. Yes. See, I stand here with a heavy heart. Yes. Years ago, when Jeanette first started this program, I was her first speaker. And now, years later, I'm a part of you. None of us never know where the road is going to lead us. None of us never know when God has his hand on us. But we can thank God for the good kids that's out there. And what we're going to have to do is start focusing on those kids that's good. Because you may not know, but the other night, that tragic that happened over at that club, I missed it by five minutes. My grandson talked me and my younger son, who was here from out of town, to take him to a club, he and his friends. And he was 17, my grandson, and his friend was 18. And when we drove up on the lot, that was the police tape and ambulance and people running. And, and my son say, ask the police officer, is everything all right in there? And he said, no, not by a long shot. He said, but did you all see anything? And we said, no, we didn't see a thing. And what happened is when we began to leave and we began to hear the news and all, and it talked about the young people that had gotten shot. And it, it talked about the ones that were standing out because they were too young to get in the club. Mm -hmm. See, I guess what I'm saying to all of us and our parents and all is we got to take account of ourselves and our children. And we have to find out who they run with, where they going. Are they old enough to be there in the first place? Yes. See, the young man that killed my son and others, someone said, and they said that the parents said that they couldn't <coughs> help this young man. At a very early age, they had their father said they had to give him to the streets. Mm. Well, what I'm saying to you today, parents, is a lot of us are giving up and giving our kids to the streets. We can't afford to give our kids to the streets. We have to hang in there. Whether we're a single mother, whether we're married or whatever, it takes a village to raise a child. And we all ought to be a part of that village. You don't let kids, your kids bring things into your home that you don't know nothing about. You don't let your daughters lay around with men you don't know nothing about. That's right. You don't let your young men just leave home and bring things home and you don't know where they got it from. You have to start at a very, very early age. And we have to really be concerned. Right now, we're starting at Tyrone Thompson's Nonviolent Institute to teach the kids nonviolence at a very early age because he was the president of the Dr. Martin Luther King Nonviolent Support Group. Well, you'll be hearing about it on January the 14th. But I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to take my seat. But as I take my seat, I just want to tell you that the same God, same God, 
that's carrying me through this heavy burden, carrying me through this tragedy that happened to my son. The same God that's, relis- that's lifting this burden for me and my family and other relatives and all is the same God that can help you. The same God. So, as I go to my seat, I want to thank God for each and every one of you. And I want you to pay attention to what your children are doing. Pay attention to what your kids are learning. Pay attention to who your kids associate with. If the dogs can sniff out drugs, they ought to be able to sniff sniff out guns. I believe that enough has been said. I believe that we feel the energy of sorrow. We feel the energy of compassion for one another. We have to turn that energy and that sorrow into action. We have to turn that passion into drive. And we must reclaim our families. And we must reclaim our neighborhoods. I'm going to now turn the program over to Alderman Sam Moore, God bless you and keep you. How do I say goodbye to what we had? Say goodbye. 